So next up we'll be looking at a topic which I'm sure you can probably figure out is a bit more of a pain in the ass. Uh, the center of gravity of a 3D body. So, but again, we're, we're all kind of used to the idea of the center of gravity. Uh, so, you know, intuitively it makes sense. It's just sometimes the math gets really annoying. Uh, it gets especially annoying in the instance where you have really complex shapes. And to a degree, uh, you know, we're often not necessarily going to be, uh, you know, doing a lot of this math ourselves. Because, uh, you know, for example, um, anytime you're modeling some sort of uh, object, uh, you're designing something, say, in SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS can tell you exactly where the center of gravity of, the, of that object is. Uh, we don't necessarily need to be relying on doing it hand calcs, but you need to have a decent understanding of uh, kind of kind of how things work. Uh, so uh, essentially, the way it it goes is that um, um, you can take any body that's made out of a whole bunch of different particles and little bit little tiny bits a volume that have weight to it and uh, if you you can replace that system of weights that 3d body as a system of weights uh, that's what the that's what that symbol there is it's a system of weights with a single resultant weight that uh, passes through the center of gravity and those are going to be equivalent. Uh, so, if uh, if it passes through the center of gravity, then basically taking the moment of this weight about any point will be will result in the exact same moment as if you took the center as if, as if you took the moments of each of these individual little particles that make up the body about the same point. So as long as you'd end up with the same moment, then it all evens out. And if you end up uh, doing your analysis and, and choosing as the origin a point along the line of action of the weight, then the total, then the net, uh, uh, the total uh, moments uh, should be zero. So yeah, here's the math. Uh, like I said, it's annoying, uh, but it's doable. Here, I mean, you know, you, you got your, you got your radius, you got your displacement vector here, you got the tiny little bits of weight uh, so that, those are just that's just the weight of a tiny little cube the weight of a tiny little cube acting in the negative j direction because gravity pulls you down so you just chop the thing up into a whole bunch of cubes and you know infinitesimally small cubes uh, if we want to be uh, uh, doing if we want to be doing a doing an integral here uh, and that'll give you the that'll give you your center of gravity. So it'll also uh, allow you to solve for the uh, displacement vector from the origin to the center of gravity uh, based upon the you know by taking this inter taking this integral and then dividing by the weight. So we can we can find out where our center of gravity is from there. So um, now again we we can break that up into uh, x bar, y bar, and z bar components uh, just by instead of uh, instead of taking you know the, the entire cross and uh, taking instead of taking the cross the the cross product for the entire uh, uh, for the entire thing. We just take the uh, cross product of the x component, 
and again, it just it just works out to uh, essentially uh, the same same deals we saw before, where we got the X bar, we got we got you know the the distance from the x axis uh, times the weight uh, in total is equal to just the distance of each individual component times its tiny little weight all summed up. And then just divide by w gives us our x bar. And then if density is constant throughout, so if we have, if we have a homogeneous material uh, with no variations in uh, in its density, the same type of material, same density, then we it works the same as a volumetric basis basis as well. We can, do, we can just solve for the centroid of the volume instead of necessarily the center of mass. Those two things are equivalent as long as the density is constant throughout. So a few common centroids. Uh, that you could find out, uh, hemispheres, uh, semi-ellipsoids of revolution, paraboloids of revolution, uh, cones, pyramids, uh, are obviously, uh, th those things will pop up. Uh, obviously, again, I don't think anyone needs to have it necessarily, have, have it on the chart to be told that the center of uh, a box is directly in the middle of the box. So rectangles got left out. And same idea, we can do composite bodies too. So basically, uh, works this works exactly the same way as our uh, as as finding the centroid of uh, a planar surface. You know, uh, the centroid of a or the center of gravity for a plate. We're just, you know, taking the moment of the total weight concentrated at the center of each of those components times, yeah, t t yeah taking the weight, the weight of each of those components, crossing it with the offset distance, and then adding all that up, adding all that up, and then divide by the total weight will give you your x bar. So just divide, divide this by this gives you x bar and so on and so forth. Uh, same with the y bar, same with z bar. And again, just always keep in mind when you're doing this that you uh, need to be working with your... Uh, uh, you need to be consistent about the axes you're working from, so you're keeping track of whether or not the x bar or y bar or z bar of the components you're looking at is positive or negative relative to your defined, uh, your originally defined uh, coordinate system. Uh, again, homogeneous composite bodies, same idea. Uh, as long as the uh, density is the same, uh, then the we're, we're, the, the moment of the total weight is concentrated at the center of the volume that's equal to the moments of, uh, of that's uh, yeah because because these because this relationship holds true so again that's not always going to be the case for stuff that you uh, stuff that you're uh, measuring the uh, yeah it for, for stuff that you're measuring the centroid for, but uh, it will often be this case, especially for like individual components. Obviously, it gets more complicated when you're trying to build machines out of components or, say, airplanes. <laughs> uh, we're not going to have an airplane that's built completely out of homogeneous composite bodies. So uh, let's do an example. 